X670 motherboards are here. But what's the right one for your Ryzen 7000 CPU? Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. Now today we are taking a look at the best X670 motherboards for Ryzen 7000 CPUs. And in this first look, we're gonna go over the key features of the best X670 motherboards, including new features like PCIe Gen 5, DDR5 memory, USB 4, and more. And we'll make our early picks for best X670 motherboard for Ryzen 7950X, 7900X, 7700X, and 7600X. If you get value out of the video, please give it a like as it makes a big difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon that way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, let's jump into it. Today, representing X670 motherboards, we have the Gigabyte Aorus X670E Master, the MSI X670E Meg Ace, and the ASRock X670E Pro RS. Now, the very first thing most Ryzen veterans will notice is that while the previous generation AM4 socket was PGA, meaning it had pins on the CPU, the AM5 socket is LGA style with the pins on the motherboard itself. One of the huge selling points for Ryzen 1000 to Ryzen 5000 has been that long live socket, which allowed even the oldest AM4 motherboards to upgrade through an amazing four generations of CPUs. Now, currently AMD has committed to AM5 through 2025, but that commitment would only be good through two CPU generations, the current Ryzen 7000 and whatever they call the Zen 5 based CPUs due out in 2024, but not the Zen 6 based CPUs that are probably due out in 2026. Now that's not to say AM5 motherboards would go away after two generations, but buyers should be aware that is a possibility. Let's briefly review the differences between the X670, X670E, and upcoming B650 and B650E chipset motherboards. Because to be honest, AMD has made this way more confusing than it needs to be. The good news is that all four of those chipset motherboards will allow full use of overclocking and DDR5 with AMD's new auto memory overclocking profile called Expo. Now, similar to the way Intel's XMP works, the AMD Expo enabled DDR5 memory kits will be able to be one button overclocked to their full rated speed by enabling the Expo settings in the BIOS. Now where the differences really lie between the chipsets, it really has to do with whether or not the chipset supports PCIe Gen 5. And that includes both the internal PCIe lanes in the motherboard itself, which just allow for a lot more devices to be connected even if they're at lower PCIe Gen 4 or below speeds, and also connecting devices that are specifically running at PCIe Gen 5, like SSDs and future graphics cards. Now, X670E is the most feature-packed motherboard chipset, and that includes support for PCIe Gen 5 devices at the main GPU slot and one or more M.2 slots simultaneously. X670 Non-E, as well as B650E chipset motherboards, will be able to offer support for either a PCIe Gen 5 GPU slot or PCIe Gen 5 M.2 slot, but not both at the same time. B650 non-E chipsets can offer PCIe Gen 5 lanes and or devices, but it's up to the board manufacturer and it's likely that most are gonna be PCIe Gen 4, though we'll just have to wait and see when B650 launches. But here's why probably none of that even matters because PCIe Gen 5 graphics cards, they don't even exist yet. In fact, NVIDIA's upcoming RTX 4000 series, they're all PCIe Gen 4. And for all except the most niche use case, the PCIe Gen 5 SSDs that are launching this fall, they're gonna be a total waste of money, especially for gamers, as there is still no performance difference between SATA, PCIe Gen 3, or PCIe Gen 4 SSDs in gaming, let alone PCIe Gen 5. Now, I'm sure there's gonna be that one person out there in my super niche use case scenario, PCIe Gen 5 might help. And yes, for that single human being out there, they should get whatever they need. But for anybody else, PCIe Gen 5 devices are more Star Trek than consumer tech right now, and that's unlikely to change for many years, even if we take future proofing into account. So basically, even the most budget B650 motherboards should offer users what X570 currently offers them on AM4, with X670, B650E, and X670E likely just bringing to the table more numerous device connections for users that need it. Now, one feature that some users might be interested in is USB 4, which we really could do a whole video on. So here it is in a nutshell. USB 4 is built around USB-C and it's gonna offer data speeds of up to 40 gigabits per second. Note I said up to, as not all USB 4 devices are gonna run that fast. 
and they also do allow power delivery. The advancement between USB 4 and USB C is that USB 4 will support multiple devices over the same connection much better than USB C. And this does include that power delivery. While USB 4 will be great for laptops and mobile devices, it isn't really clear if it will offer much to enthusiast desktop PC users. Possibly as an alternative to Thunderbolt 4 for those in the Thunderbolt data ecosystem, but for everyday users and frankly gamers, it likely won't bring anything new. All that being said, the only motherboard manufacturer who is currently supporting USB 4 is Asus. And so far, their released XX70 and XX70E motherboards have some level of support for USB 4 up and down their lineup. So if this is a feature that you feel like you really need, you'll want to buy an ASUS motherboard. But fair warning that the vast majority of desktop PC users, you're not really going to get anything out of it. Let's briefly address motherboard VRMs, which is the power delivery on the motherboard itself in this little L if you're not sure what a VRM is. Now, while in previous motherboard generations, we've often had motherboards with VRMs that just couldn't keep up with the highest end CPUs, particularly if you're overclocking, I'm happy to report that all the X670 motherboard and X670E motherboard VRMs we reviewed are incredibly overbuilt, at least on the spec sheet, where they exceed similar specs for Intel Z690 motherboards, which were a lot more power hungry, but in testing were all found to be adequate even for the i9-12900K. So while it's always a good idea to wait for motherboard VRM thermal testing, if you really intend to push like the 7950X, I think you're probably fine buying any board that we discuss for any of the four CPUs using Precision Boost overdrive settings. Now let's talk cooler compatibility because while AM5 will be able to use any AM4 mountable cooler, several cooler companies have announced AM5 specific mounting hardware for their coolers due to a slight CPU height difference. Now in our Ryzen 9 7900X build and test bench using the Gigabyte Aorus Master X670E motherboard and the Deepcool LS720 360mm all-in-one liquid cooler, we didn't seem to have any issues with it. And our temps, they seem to be a couple degrees cooler than other reviewers using similar precision boost override settings. But we would recommend switching over to the AM5 specific mounting hardware once it becomes available even if you use the AM4 hardware to get yourself started. We'll cover more on coolers for Ryzen 7000 in an upcoming video. One final feature note, in terms of onboard audio, we are now seeing the ALC4080 audio codec become more mainstream on AM5 motherboards. While this isn't the first time we've seen this codec on a motherboard, in fact, it was used in many of the 12th gen Intel Z690 motherboards. This may be the first time a lot of Ryzen users will be bumping into it. So in terms of performance, it basically produces the same audio quality as the high-end ALC1220 audio codec that we're familiar with, just in a different way, which most users frankly won't even notice. There's a lot more technical information on how it works, so if you want a deeper dive into the process differences, I'll leave a link in the video description to an Igor's Lab article that walks you through it. There do appear to be several variations of this audio codec, including an ALC4082 and ALC4050 version, but we anticipate for the most part, these will be similar in performance with the ALC1220 audio codecs. Let's jump into our early look product recommendations, and remember, we've got everything linked down in the video description, and you can click those links for current pricing. Now remember, these are all based on current US prices and we do expect those prices to change quite a bit over the first couple of months. And when B560 motherboards come out, we'll revisit all of this again in best motherboards for Ryzen 7000. All right, let's start off at the, the effectively the bottom of the product stack here in terms of pricing. Now, to me, these are not budget motherboards, $250, $245 and up motherboards are not budget in my estimation. But let's talk about if you're interested in spending the least amount possible on an X670, but getting most of that feature set. So let's start off with X670E. Remember, these will have PCIe Gen 5, both at the M.2 slot, as well as at the graphics card slot simultaneously. Again, I don't think anybody needs that, but if you want it, here it is for $245. I will note all of these super cheaper boards I'm showing you now all have entry-level audio codecs on them, something I... I just don't agree with. I think they should have put at least ALC 1220 audio on them. And as we'll see with some of the other boards, once you jump up about $30, $40, they all have high-end audio codecs. So if you're plugging in a digital audio device instead of an analog audio device, maybe that doesn't actually matter to you and you're just looking to save 50 bucks, this would be a good option. Similarly, the board that ASRock sent over that you saw on the desk, the ASRock X670E Pro RS, I actually would probably lean towards this board, has one additional M.2 slot. Honestly, it looks nicer, has Wi-Fi in it, but and even if you don't need Wi-Fi, it also has Bluetooth on it, so you might need Bluetooth. To me, that's for about 20 
20 bucks more, this is definitely the direction I would go. Again, if you don't need like super nice audio, if you're gonna use plug-in uh, digital audio instead. There are some other kind of ones that I wanna mention here, but they're, they're not XX70E, just, FYI, these are X670 boards, and there's a gigabyte board, it's AORS Elite, it also has four M.2 slots. I'm just gonna mention these because I do think gigabyte does really well, so they give you tons of USB connectivity. That's something you're gonna see throughout all the X670 boards, though, is there is a ton of connectivity on these boards, unlike the B50, 550 boards, even some of the X570 boards, more limited. One thing you'll note is that all of the boards uh, in the X670 lineup have a front panel USB Type-C. So if you get a case that has a front panel USB Type-C header, no longer do you have to wonder, oh, should I get this board or this board instead and I won't be able to use my front panel. $289 is too expensive to me for this board. This board should be more like 240 because it doesn't have upgraded audio even though it's got the additional M.2. And then similarly with the ASUS Prime X670-P, the only reason I'm actually including this, uh, there's a Wi-Fi enabled version of it for 289. Currently this version non-Wi-Fi is sold out for 269. Again, X670 non-E board, so it doesn't have both the M.2 and the GPU at the same time. To me, you don't need any of it, but again, the thing I don't like about this board is that while it advertises USB 4 uh, support, it's just a header on the motherboard, so you still have to buy the add-in card for it. It's not like it's got a USB 4 port on the back of it you're gonna be able to plug into. Just a Thunderbolt slash USB 4 header that you're gonna to have to actually buy the expansion card in, plug the expansion card in, then plug it into the header. Those typically run anywhere from, you know, maybe you can get one on sale, but anywhere from $80 on up. So if you're already gonna go that route, you might want to consider a different board. Now let's jump into a class of other boards that gets a strong recommendation from me. As long as you're looking for X670 or X670E, you're not willing to wait for B650 or you don't want B650 for whatever reason, just know that I'm gonna probably be mostly recommending B650 boards once they hit the market. That being said, 285, not horrific pricing, not good, but not horrific. ASRock X670E, still legend. What do I like about this board? Number one, I like that it actually has ALC 1220 audio codec, which is kind of top of the line. Not entirely enthralled in the, you know, it's only got three capacitors here. That doesn't always tell the full story. That being said, it's got great connectivity to it. We're looking at a lot of high speed USB Gen 3.1, 3.2 Gen 2 port, as well as a USB type C. You also have a lot of USB 2.0 to just connect your keyboard, your mice, all those kind of other miscellaneous things too. Comes with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, dual LAN on it. Again, this is gonna hit a lot of users for M.2 drives and it's because it's X670E, you're gonna get PCIe Gen 5, both at the main GPU slot as well as at least at one of the M.2. Overall for $285, if you're just looking to get something that's gonna have all the bases covered basically, and you're looking for something in the more premium XX70 chipset, this is gonna be my top pick. The other motherboard that I would look at, especially if maybe you don't like ASRock, maybe you like MSI better, I do like the MSI Pro X670-P. Now, it's not X670E, so you're gonna not get PCIe Gen 5, I believe at the main GPU slot here. Again, to me, no big deal. Doesn't come with like the built-in backplate and all those kind of things. From my point of view, again, not a huge selling point, but if you do like more of those customization features, you can't find them. The problem is once you go above this price range, you're gonna have to go way above this price range to get anything even as good. Now it has less USB overall connectivity, doesn't have the dual LAN to it, but it does have ALC 1220 audio codec, which is really nice. It comes with Wi-Fi, it comes with Bluetooth. And again, if you, it has a lot more capacitors, as you can see on the audio section there. Again, not doesn't always tell the full story of that, but if you're looking for something in the MSI bucket and you want something that has all the features checked, this is probably a good place to start. And if you don't mind spending a little bit more money for kind of the, the pre premium er version of X670E with, you know, again, what looks like a really phenomenal audio section down here. It looks like an overall just very, very good motherboard is the ASUS Tough Gaming X670E plus Wi-Fi. Comes with a lot of rear panel connectivity, has two USB type C's on it, it has several faster USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports on it. Does only come with a two and a half gigabit Realtek LAN. However, I feel like for 98% of you, that's gonna get you covered. It does come with all five of the uh, audio outs in the back, BIOS flashback, kind of, the, kind of the whole deal. So this is another really, really good option. Obviously the VRMs on all of these boards, frankly, they look very, very strong. I do like the styling of the Tough. 
329 I really wish this board was a little bit cheaper. I really wish it was more like $300, but honestly, 10% more, you're already spending 300 bucks. You know, I would probably go this route if you want maybe the most premium. So here's our big challenge. After $329 here, the problem becomes, what are we really getting for our money? I, we're getting significant amounts of diminishing returns at this point. The cost is just skyrocketing. And what you're actually getting in terms of features, honestly, it seems like it's shrinking and shrinking. And I think we're also in a danger zone for a lot of users now where they start overspending, way overspending on their motherboards. Again, I'm gonna run, recommend B650 for most folks, but if you are an X670 buyer, you can get in this danger zone where you're spending way too much money and it's gonna start costing you. So instead of giving, getting a 7900X, you're gonna go down to a 7700X, or instead of a 7950X, you're gonna go with a 7900X. So you're gonna end up costing yourself performance unless your budget is more on the unlimited side. And I know we got some of you folks out there at this point you're primarily spending for a specific reason. So aesthetics wise, uh, some boards that I like are like the ASUS Strix boards. That's the X670E-F, really nice looking board. Again, what you're mostly getting on this board is the, the, the USB in the back is all super high speed. So instead of USB 3.2 Gen 1, it's 3.2 Gen 2 and up. But again, you're, you're spending the money for that. If you're a creator, there is one board I think really stands out. I do kind of like the X670E Tai Chi, and it does have USB 4 on it. It has two USB 4 ports on it. It's the only non-ASUS board that I'm aware of supporting USB 4. However, I think the, the ProArt Creator, for the same price, doesn't come out until October 7th. This is the board that I think if you're like a super high-end creator and you have to have the best of the best and you're looking for something, Thunderbolt 4, USB 4, just tons of high-speed connectivity, you're looking for dual LAN, those kinds of more niche features, this is what I would be recommending to you for $499. Again, I think we're getting into what, what feels like should be the stratosphere of these boards. Unfortunately, it's not. Hopefully we will see pricing on a lot of these higher end boards come down after the first initial wave. That's why we'll, we, we will revisit all of this. You know, after B650 comes out, we'll take a, another quick look at it and we'll see where pricing is shaken out. Let's really quickly go through micro ATX and ITX because you only have one option in each category and they're both ROG Strix. So, and they're both ridiculously expensive. $599 for a micro ATX motherboard is, this is this absolutely highway robbery, absolutely highway robbery. I don't care the features it comes with. You can get one of the other Strix boards for $450. Why wouldn't you get the ATX size one? Just doesn't make a lot of sense in my mind, but if you want it, this is the only option. And then of course, the only option for ITX, unfortunately, and it just sold out at Newegg, I'm sure they'll get more stock in. It's the Asus ROG Strix X670E dash I, $479, not quite as bad as that micro ATX motherboard, but still not great. I, I do like this little feature it comes with though, because obviously the rear panel on, on a board like this gets just filled up with a ton of stuff on it. Little controller comes with, it comes with additional plugins. Interesting feature, uh, interesting idea. I hadn't quite seen something like that before, but honestly for $469, I would definitely wait for B650, unless for some reason you need the PCIe Gen 5. Let us know down in the comments what boards you looking at and what are your needs out of a motherboard and remember if you got value out of the video give it a like it makes a huge difference to the channel especially this guy right here and of course subscribe and click that bell icon that way you get notified when we release cool content if you're looking for our amazing ryzen 7900x gaming build that we put together and benchmarked on day one check out this video right here we go through everything including benchmarks against the i9 12900k and ryzen 5950x and we'll catch you on the next one